Dave, you know, the school shooting here in Florida, um, you know, they're saying that the shooter was used an AR-15, obviously a very controversial weapon in politics now. Uh, 17 people died. The country is devastated. You know, people are just getting tired of these school shootings. It seems to be happening more and more lately. I think, you know, you hear people that are over 40 say, hey, we didn't grow up in a society where there were school shootings. But if you're under 40, this has become uh, normal. So I, I'd love for you to dissect a little bit of what is going on here and if there might be some inconsistencies with the mainstream narrative and what is really going on. Okay. Um, first of all, um, I, I do an X-22 report uh, Monday through Friday, once on the weekend. And when I was looking at everything, this is before the shooting, I noticed there was a lot of investigations going on with the Uranium One deal, with the Clinton emails, and the deep state, which I call them the cabal. Uh, they were having a, a huge problem because what was happening was a lot of facts were coming out and they were being broadcast over the corporate media and it was very difficult to do this every single day without you know something else trying to uh, come out to cover it up so i said back then it was i think it was january where i said between january and march there's going to be some type of an event now i actually said i don't think it's going to be a mass shooting because i don't think that's going to clog the airwaves long enough uh, for them to keep that in the news cycle to basically counter everything that is coming out. Well, I knew there was an event coming. I knew something was going to happen, and it was a mass shooting. How long can they keep this on the news cycle? Well, they're going to try to push it as hard as they possibly can. Now, first of all, we need to realize that this happened in the state of Florida, where a lot of individuals have weapons, um, it, it, it really doesn't take that much to get a weapon. You have to wait like three to five days. They do a background check and you can get a weapon. We also have to understand that this took place in Florida where Trump has his Mar-a-Lago uh, vacation type of area. He goes down there quite a bit and this would be a huge controversy um, for him to handle this whole entire situation. And this is only about 40 miles away from Parkland. Now, Parkland was just voted the one of the top cities or towns in Florida as one of the safest, safest, safest areas um, where you can go to school. And what's very interesting about this is that the FBI, they knew of this person. They knew that he was threatening to do something and they did nothing about this. Now, what's interesting about this is that he heard voices in his head. He heard voices, you know, telling him to do things. He was on medication and we've had many other individuals that were on psychiatric drugs, the killer of Northern Illinois University he was on a psychiatric drug. The killer of Virginia Tech was on a psychiatric drug. Stockton, Navy Yard, Fort, Fort Hood, and, you know, Aurora, Tallahassee. The, the list goes on. All these individuals have the same exact pattern. And what is interesting about this is when this first started, the kids thought that this was a drill. Now, they were scheduled to have a active shooter drill. The fire alarm went off in the building before. They knew the SWAT team was going to be there, and there is video of the SWAT team entering a classroom, and they screamed at the kids to put their cameras down because the kids had their cameras up. They were sitting in their seats. They weren't hiding under the seats because they knew there was a drill going to happen, and they realized that, hey, if the SWAT team comes in, I'd like to film this, but they didn't want any of this filmed. They didn't want any of it. Now, Every time we see a false flag, and let me just break apart what a false flag hoax is and a false flag. A false flag hoax is something that is completely staged, nobody dies, and it's presented as something really happening. A false flag, well, this is somewhere, something that they use, a they also use a patsy and a false flag hoax, but 
they use a patsy and there's other shooters within the building and they actually kill individuals to make it look as real as possible just like 9 11 was a false flag many individuals passed away during that false flag and the false flag is used to push a certain agenda and we can see right now the agenda is going back to gun control that's what they want to do why do they want gun control well when obama was president they've had many many mass shootings during his presidency and every single time they tried to push certain bills one in particular is the un arms treaty which john kerry signed they couldn't get the congress to sign off on it or vote on it and it never went anywhere which allows the un to step in and they're saying it's going to override the second amendment where they can control the issuance of weapons which means no one's really going to get a weapon so we have certain reports from students saying that the fire alarm rang two times in one day which is very odd now again the first part was a drill to get everyone used to it like yes here's the fire alarm it rang the the drill starting and then they had it once in the afternoon and that's when the actual action started to happen now we did a search on google and it turns up that there were a lot of different articles talking about what happened in parkland but these articles came out a day or two ahead now most of the time the corporate media is giving these news reports a day ahead of time they hide them sometimes they forget to say hey don't search on the hidden articles the google bots come they search and they put it out on google now what's very interesting about all of this is they're continually pushing the idea of gun control and they keep using the idea that there were 18 school shootings within the within the year of 2018 and what's very interesting about this is when you start to break them down you start to realize well there really wasn't actually 18 school shootings the way we think of them like the first one a man committed suicide using a gun in an elementary school parking lot when the school was closed now he could have done this anywhere this was not a mass you know this wasn't a school shooting this was someone who drove someplace to commit suicide uh, another one was shots were fired at a new start high school in washington uh, no one was hurt they never caught the guy it's amazing how they can't catch any of these people hmm. someone shot a pellet gun at a school bus they removed that one because people would question the pellet gun and that really doesn't count a grayson college student confessed um that he had a real gun with a training gun and accidentally fired a bullet into a wall <laughs> wow. and they they consider that a school shooting a 14 year old seventh grade student shot and killed himself inside the bathroom of an elementary school which they consider a you know school mass shooting and this, the list goes on and on and on so when you really hear of all these shootings it's really not the school shootings the way we're thinking of them they're just using a term there was actually 19 of them they removed the pellet gun one but they kept the rest but when you really read through them there really weren't any school shootings the way we think of them there i think there was like three of them actually that actually happened now the fbi they were tipped off about this individual there was a youtuber that said yes he posted something his name was Nicholas Cruz. I'm going to be a professional school shooter. And the FBI really didn't do much. Why? Because they said, well, the person who posted it, his name had a K and the Nicholas Cruz that did, did the actual shooting, he has a C in his name. And that's why we really didn't check. And that's why we didn't look at this. But really, the reason why they didn't check is because they use these individuals as patsies. And they want to know that this is the person they can use they want to make sure that they understand who it is they want to understand that this is the person who's going to do it and they're in contact with these people actually the police visited this individual's home 39 times now if we go back in time we can see that the fbi knew a lot about other people like in boston uh tamerlan Tsyarnev and his brother they knew about him now he was an fbi informant and they didn't do anything about it. Fort Hood, well, in a string of emails sent to the FBI, Nadal Hassan openly admitted that he wanted his fellow soldiers dead. 
They didn't do anything about it. The New York City bomber. Well, this is Ahmad Khan Rahami. Well, his father alerted the official saying that he might be doing something. The FBI didn't do anything. The Pulse nightclub knew about Omar Mateen, didn't do anything. The reason why the FBI doesn't do anything is because they use them as patsies. There's nothing that they want to do with them, except they want them to carry out the incident. Maybe sometimes it doesn't go the way they want and they help out with additional resources. And they continually do this over and over and over because they need someone to blame this on. And this is why the FBI always knows who the person is. Now, what's very interesting about all of this is that in every school in Florida, uh, there's always the Broward Sheriff officer. Uh, they normally stay in the schools, especially the high schools. Uh, there's either one or two of them within the high school. And I kept on asking, wh where was this individual, the BSO officer? Why wasn't he or, or both of them running towards the event? Why didn't they hear the shooting? And it turns out that on this day, those officers were off campus. Very strange in itself why these individuals wouldn't be on campus. And yes, these individuals are armed because if they were there, they would have stopped that person. So what they normally do is they remove these type of individuals. They have them go off someplace else at the same exact time. Hmm. Now, what's very interesting about the name of the school, which is Marjorie Stonehall Douglas, is that Marjorie Stoneman Douglas was an American journalist, a writer, a feminist, an environmentalist, known for her staunch defense of the Everglades against efforts to drain the swamp. This is what it actually says. She didn't want the swamp drained. Now, this happened in Florida, 40 miles away from Mar a Largo. And what we're looking at right here is to me, it looks like it's a message to Trump to stop what they're doing or those individuals in the Trump administration to stop the investigations, stop looking into things, stop trying to drain the swamp. And I know a lot of people don't think he's doing anything, but all these investigations are leading to something much, much larger. There's many, many indictments. They have a lot of information, a lot of facts, and they're investigating all these different crimes. And we see right now there are many other students that aren't showing up in the corporate media who are saying that the Secret Service was there uh, a couple weeks ahead of time where they changed the security protocols in the school. Maybe this is why the BSO officer was off campus. So when we start to look at all this, we can see there's a lot of anomalies that are occurring in this situation. And once again, there was another student who was describing to a reporter saying that she was walking down the hall with Nicholas Cruz. And as she was walking down the hall, she heard gunshots. And if she's walking with Nicholas Cruz, who's shooting the guns? And she's saying, wow, I thought it was going to be you doing all of this because of everything that you've been talking about. And this is kind of weird that he was able to you know, leave campus. I know they're making it seem like he blended in with the students, he hid his weapon, he got off the campus. He didn't even know what was going on. He didn't even know he was being used. This is why she heard gunshots off in the distance. And there was another student who said, yeah, I saw this individual running around in a mask and a tactical vest shooting the gun. So we're having all these different eyewitnesses, eyewitness accounts and it doesn't fit into the scenario that the corporate media is trying to push. And of course, the corporate media is kind of staying away from the psychiatric drugs, the mental illness, and they're focusing on gun control. And that's what they're really focusing on because they want something done. They're putting a lot of pressure on Trump. This is done on purpose. This is used as a distraction. And I do believe that as we continually look into this, uh, we're going to see more anomalies and one of the biggest and strangest thing is 
they're already calling to demolish building twelve just like they did in sandy hook. they demolished the entire school and the only reason you would want to do that is you want to hide all the evidence. yes, people are saying, well, kids don't want to go back into that building because of what happened there and they use this to say, yes, we should just take it down get rid of it and this way nobody can ever check what really happened in the school and what we're seeing right now is that all these anomalies, everything that we're looking at there's a lot of questions here there's a lot of questions of where are all these individuals where was the BSO officers why did this where's the person's weapon where he stashed it um they're saying they stashed it in the bathroom nobody noticed he had the weapon and also i want to bring up they keep showing the 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 individual nicholas cruz um in a picture with a pistol and that pistol is not a real gun the pistol is an airsoft bb gun and the reason i know this is because an airsoft bb gun has a red tip on it it's done on purpose so police know that it's not a real weapon and if you look at some of the pictures they show him with um the pistol they might have been taking that down now because people are starting to realize that he's holding a, a gun that's not really real hmm. and the other weapons that they're saying that he has we don't even know if they're real because on social media he kept putting out there that he's been using pellet guns now of course the corporate media is saying that he went in and he bought an ar-15 then he purchased 10 more rifles now the kid some people say he had a job at the dollar store some people said he had no job whatsoever and if he's purchasing 10 weapons especially an ar-15 where's he getting this money hmm. where's all this money coming from and where are his adoptive parents that he's living with and where did he get the gun safe i mean think about what is happening here and if you notice all these individuals they normally always have a lot of weapons because they need to make it bigger than life like look he had 10 weapons yet he, he came into the the building like the las vegas shooter you know with three handguns this weapons all this ammunition hmm. it, it just seems a little ridiculous and they're just shooting for the stars right now trying to get their point across and this individual david hogg who is pushing and reporting on everything and taking everything to dc who is a student supposedly of the school his father is an FBI agent and it seems like they pushed him out into the front there's actually video footage where he kind of messed up his lines when he was speaking to the reporters so there's a lot of anomalies there are a lot of things that don't make sense and once again those the the, the biggest thing that sticks out for me is the BSO officers uh, where they're normally on campus they're patrolling each building and they would have heard the gun shots they would have heard the gun going off so many times and they would have ran to that location so quickly that that person would have been caught right there or stopped or shot dead but they were off campus at the time which is very very suspicious the other thing is that there was a drill at the same exact time this is how they normally set things up because they can basically know how everything is going to go down and a lot of the kids when you see them walking out of the school they thought it was part of a drill that's why they're in single file with their hands up they thought that this was part of the drill that was scheduled for that day so there's a lot of anomalies with this and i do believe that there'll be additional events coming up because what's going to happen here yes they're going to play this out as long as possible we're going to see vigils they're going to see marches in three to four weeks or so when it all starts to die down and there's nothing else that they can say or or do um the other news is going to start to creep in and this is where they're going to have their problem because you're going to see bombshells come out about the uranium one deal the clinton email scandal um Mueller his 13 indictments they're going absolutely nowhere first of all the Russians aren't even in this country there's no extradition treaty with Russia so there's no way to try these individuals and first of all the only thing they have on these individuals is that they basically bought 
are uh, bought advertisement time on Facebook and other social media platforms. They impersonated other users to make people believe that they were pushing a certain candidate. And it wasn't just Trump. And believe me, China does this. Um, Saudi Arabia does this. Uh, the corporate media does this. I mean, think about it. The corporate media, who were they pushing? They weren't objective. They were pushing their candidate. They spent millions of dollars every single day to push their candidate. Hmm. The U.S. meddles in other people's elections. The same exact thing. There's no difference. They go into other countries. They actually have regime change. And they actually kill that leader and put in a new leader. And this happened in Iraq. It happened in uh, they try to push it in Syria, which is not working out. Libya, Lebanon, I mean, you name Ukraine, you name it. The United States is guilty of this. So if the Russians, all they have on them is paying for advertisement. And now we're finding out that a lot of the advertisements were paid for after the election. And the whole thing's starting to fall apart now. But I do believe because of what is happening right now, and Mueller has nothing with his investigation. He's he, there's, there's nothing to put out there. He's just putting out crap just to get people's attention on what he's doing. And we can see that this is going to be dying down and the regular news cycle is going to come back online. And this is something that they, they don't want. This is something that they can't have. So I do believe there's going to be something else coming up maybe in four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, it could be another mass shooting. It could be something even larger. It could ha happen in Europe. All they need is something to keep this brand new news in the news cycle to distract from what is really happening. And they're continually doing this so people don't catch on to the point where the entire uh, governmental system and all those people that were involved in all of this that they're in a lot of trouble. And if all this information comes out and a lot of these people drag, are dragged into court, well, guess what? They're gonna have a lot of problems. And I don't know if a lot of these individuals will actually make it into court, I think. A lot